flying saucer. Okay, um, this is um, a little bit smaller motor than the one I showed in previous video. This is from a drill, and this uh, has his uh, symmetric version right here. I just uh, used uh, what I call linear uh, brushes because they are not following. Uh, They are straight and you can see it right here and by the way this is the type of brush that I was uh, referring to that it, it's kind of reddish in color and it's very very good high quality um, you can see the metallic look in it and it's it's very solid it doesn't it's not like like the fading carbon type um, soft this is very hard pretty hard and anyways uh, what I have done here I have set channel 1 and channel 2 to the um, in the in the scope and I have set also set one millisecond and I have set V top in blue and V top in yellow, uh, channel one and channel two. And what I'm doing is I'm, I have um, connected the um, the output. Uh, it's blue, and the input is the yellow uh, channel. Now the power source is set up at the same uh, type that I did I have set uh, current max uh, current uh, to limit and voltage to limit It's an 18 volt uh, 3 amps uh, power supply and uh, I'm gonna be running it on checking the scope measurements on this and and this is linear again this this is goes uh, negative uh, positive and negative here and this model is being wound with um, 30 gauge a red radio shock uh, motor and you can see there V top is over every square is a hundred volts so it's going over the ridge over 300 volts which is uh, 288 <coughs> 300 now if we go in time two hundred milliseconds we can see the difference in output of this motor right there and it's at 69 70 and temperature on this is very very low temperature this is room temperature 87 degrees 38 it's only about one two degrees above and the speed is well really hot and pretty steady too now You can see the is uh, increase in, in power. Now it's at 500, 100. Let me set it at, at one, at 50, 100. You can see right there the, the very high increase, and, and the spikes are very. They're not random. They are they are very uh, steady on the positive side of the of the of the line. They're positive spikes and, and 
can see the readout there. Now that's what used to be our, our baggy MF, we're collecting it right here. And the strength of this motor, it's See the, the amperage goes, I'm grinding the, and I don't want to do that, so. So, you can see there the, the output here. Now what I'm going to be doing, it's, um, I'm going to be, um, checking on the on the um, on this motor here this is a, a symmetric motor I'm just going to be I'm not going to scope this most of you guys can do that um, just gonna add this and you guys are gonna see these motors uh, <coughs> asymmetry I'm sorry symmetry it's um you can um reach um very high rpms but then you have to sacrifice torque so this motor right here is uh it can reach high rpm it don't and if i keep it like this it, it won't it won't do it it won't do a hole on here. It will get stuck and amperage won't drop down. It's it gets high speed but it doesn't have the, the, the torque and I am not even pressing it that hard. That's the reason why they need to connect these uh, symmetric systems into these complex gearboxes so they can amplify the torque by uh, a very sophisticated gear uh, transmission system that uh, they use it on impact drills and uh, that's how they can make it now this motor the problem with this motor is it gets stuck for a certain amount of time above the three amps or four six amps it'll burn out it'll crispy fry So here I have the same motor. I have attached uh, the drill bit on it. It kind of vibrates because this is not the proper chuck to hold it steady and uh, it kind of oxidates a little bit. But uh, it, it, so you guys have an idea and watch the amperage. Uh, what would using a direct straight motor with the drill bit? Um, watch this. It, going through and watch the ampere so it doesn't stop passes the, the whole thing this is asymmetry 